All right, hello everyone, and welcome to another Tinker's Academy video. I'm your host, Kay Elmer, and you are watching a Browns Gas webinar as part of the Bioelectric Healing Series. We've got Ben from H2 Biohacker on the on the line. We've got uh, several other folks that have joined the webinar. We've got Mandy and Pete and Lone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to be chatting about Browns Gas. And uh, first, before we jump right into that, let me just do a little quick disclaimer. Uh, the information in this video is for information purposes only, is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Always seek the advice of your physician or other qualified healthcare provider with any questions you may have regarding a medical condition or treatment and before undertaking a new healthcare regimen. And never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on the internet. <laughs> uh, the Tigers Academy does not recommend or endorse any specific tests, physicians, procedures, opinions, or other information that may be mentioned in the video. Reliance on any information covered is solely at your own risk. And thank you for joining. Hey, did I do that fast enough? Because, you know, I've been practicing that for like three years. Hmm. Very so, good. <laughs> welcome. Welcome, everyone else. Uh, this is a chat about Brown's gas. Um, and, you know, the last, the last one we had last month, we were really kind of getting into some of the, and I think this is where the, the rubber really hits the road, right? It's like, what are people saying? Because there's not a lot of actual Brown's gas studies yet because everybody is usually studying just hydrogen, right? But the actual uh, experience of, of people using Brown's gas is something that's coming out as, as primarily uh, user experiences until such time that scientists will actually dedicate in a, and you know a focus purely on Brown's gas as opposed to hydrogen. But uh, we didn't really even get a chance to get like really deep into it. So I kind of wanted to just uh, you know, have another webinar. Let's talk about some of the testimonials. Uh, but Lone, I do know that you've got to take off a little early. So maybe we'll kind of like, you know, just kind of like one of the things that was interesting and and, and Lone's going to kind of, I, I invited him to kind of chat about his experience is about using Brown's gas in CPAP machines, right? So if anyone remembers or if you had a chance to watch the prior webinar, um, uh, basically I'd ask that question and Ben, your your position on that was, not a good idea uh, for some reasons. And then, of course, there's always somebody out there that's going to do it. <laughs> that's yeah, someone's it. always going to push it. Yeah, it's, that's, that's the beauty of the tinker, you know, a, a right. guild, right? I agree with that. And, you know, so you got to right. tinker. And so, of course, Lone does it. Uh, and, and so, hey, you know, so I guess let's talk about start with, like, Brown's gas as part of your CPAP machine. So uh, first, if we can do a short recap. Uh, on Ben, you know, like, why, why do you think it's a bad idea? And then, lo and what happened when you did it? And then, you know, let's, let's, I just, because I want to hear, uh, you know, like, well, so let Ben, why don't you start and let's, let's just chat about doing that. Cause, you know, I think it's, I mean, the, idea. The, the base idea or the premise is that you don't want a, a super high concentration of hydrogen anywhere that's going to reach a flammable level. So, when in the CPAP machines, depending on how it's configured, if you're, breathing in and exhaling into the same mask for instance you're just concentrating the hydrogen so you it's there's more of a risk there of say a, a spark if there wasn't such a spark it could you know pop or ignite so that's the only thing you got to keep in mind when using hydrogen normally when you breathe it through a cannula it quickly diffuses into air so the idea is that you're getting you know below or somewhere around the four percent uh quantity or by volume in air of hydrogen you know in the in the air in the mixture you're breathing so that's the idea and premise behind this. Okay. Um, so it's that whole keep it under 4% of total, like, you know, gas, you know, air plus hydrogen so that you don't get, it doesn't get flammable, right? Right. Around 4% of hydrogen by okay. volume in there. So Lone, how did you hook it up? Yes. Yeah. When you were using Brown's so, gas in this, yeah. So just explain, like, like, how did you hook it up and was there an accumulation? Or the, There's not an accumulation yeah. because what I was doing is I was putting it in through the vent that was drawing the air into the CPAP machine. And the CPAP machine creates about, well, my personal setting was between 7 and 11 atmospheres. So you're constantly getting about 7 to 11 atmospheres being pressed into your nose and it's vented out through a vent uh, on your mask. And that vent um, is constantly flowing. So you're never getting a concentration of the Brown's gas because with my particular machine, which isn't nearly as safe as Ben's or George's, um, I was getting too high of a concentration just to directly put it in my nose. So if I put it in through the CPAP machine, it would 
it was getting drawn in with about seven atmospheres of air all the time, run through an additional humidifier inside of the CPAP machine and then uh, given to me. And I, I used that for probably 11 of the last 12 months um, until I got a little bit concerned about some of the sounds I had coming out of my rounds gas machine. Okay. So Ben, what do you think of that? Because it sounds like it's just like a one-way street, right? It comes in the vent, into the lungs, out the ga out the mask. Yeah, I mean, if it's mixed with enough air um, initially, and then it's all expelled. I mean, like I said, it depends on how the machine is configured. You know, there's a, a good way and bad way to do it. You know, or a safe way and a not so safe, not so safe way to do it. But uh, it sounds like so what, what Lone is doing is not that bad. So, what, is, what what I want to hear from Lone is like, so what were your experiences in general? My sisters had one. Yeah, so what the CPAP does is it's constantly pushing air in there so that it can maintain an a atmospheric pressure of like seven times to 11 times for my particular machine. Uh, but it can go down as much as two to, um, I think, 14 as far as the pressures. But it's always adding pressure to enable you to breathe without it get your, your, your airways getting clogged up. And because of that you constantly have a fresh supply of air so what i was getting was brown's gas diluted by at least two atmospheres and probably at least seven atmospheres from my particular settings and and that's far more than if i was just breathing it directly from a cannula and that's being blown in there all the time and so you you are breathing what's what the air that's passing through in that moment but it's not building up that, that doesn't happen with any seat that Okay. <clears throat> right. So, so the bottom line is, so what effects did you notice when we were here to talk about, you know, testimonials and brown gas yeah, and how it's it helping people? So, it was fantastic. It, um, it, I had a lot of dreams. If I was dreaming too much, I'd have to turn off the, off the brown's gas machine at night. <laughs> and so that was probably five out of, out of seven nights that I would do that. I had excellent, excellent sleep. I had, um, it had a great effect on my skin. It had a great effect on my eyesight. And I think taking it in, co in combination with C60, uh, it really had a great protective effect for me. I, I never experienced any, I've been sick all year, so except for a couple of headaches when I think I might have had the coronavirus. Wow. So so you could you could definitely tell a distinct difference between, you know, like a before and after, you know, using the CPAP and all of a sudden you connect Brown's gas to it and you actually could absolute difference. There was a, cha a positive change for the better with Brown's gas as opposed to just running the CPAP by itself. Very much. And I very much miss it. It's been uh, three or four weeks since I've, been comfortable running the machine in my in my bedroom and I do miss it and my sleep quality isn't as good and I don't have the dreams that I used to have wow. so, right, the, I know the dreams dream. dreams and mental like to increase mental activity I mean in, in a good way or like the number one um, first effect that people mention and notice so that's and it seems to be what's happening. I mean, I'm just as, you know, in part theory or based on some research, but my own, you know, guessing as well is that um, the, the hydrogen, it, it quickly passes the blood brain barrier and gets in there. And there's research to show that the mitochondria may be able to directly utilize hydrogen. And so it just, it activates your mind. But what's interesting at the same time, it enables you to sleep. So your body can sleep as it normally would. It's not like a caffeine stimulant to just keep you awake, but your body can, what's interesting, you can go to sleep, you know, and get good sleep, but at the same time, your mind is more active. And that's why it seems like you can fall asleep, but your dream activity and the clarity of your dreams and the lucidity of your dreams increases. So it seems like that's the way the body is normally made for that type of environment. And the, the hydrogen of the brown's gas enhances that whole or to make you make your whole system work more efficiently, sleep better, and more active dreams at night. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. So I'm so I'm just curious. It's like 
how many were you did you ever measure like how much browns gas you were pumping into the vent you know because the machine can be throttled up or down so my my machine had a zero that had only one setting and that was on and uh, you taught me how to do a kind of a fill with some fill a jar with water and right replace it with the bottle browns tank. gas uh -huh. and i was getting about um 800 liters per minute not 800 800 milliliters per minute obviously okay um and so it, it had a pretty good output and it's higher than what they're recommending as far as what you put directly into your into your nose okay um and did your sleep apnea um was there any difference in the in your you know your apnea issue uh because you know so yeah the cpap machine actually measures that and yeah. i've had fantastic numbers all year long so it measures it by the number of interruptions per right. hour uh -huh. and right. i'm typically at uh you know seven to eleven and while i was using it i was down to uh, 0.9 to 1.1 so it definitely helped us that, yeah. that's just the CPAP or that was with Brown's gas the Brown's gas did that no, that's with Brown's gas now wow. now that I don't have it it's really? gone back up uh, wow. to about a five okay six. That, so there is an yeah. overall improvement in me but that's significant you know, I did put on a lot of weight last year and I and it didn't get worse so you and everybody else I'm with you yeah <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. Oh, man. I'm like the old lockdown inch right uh but wow okay so you actually drop from seven to eleven incidences per hour down to zero yeah with browns gas and yeah. then when you took the browns gas off you went back up again yeah i went back up to about five i'm getting a solid five every night wow. right now i miss wow. it i'm gonna have to build a glass shield or buy one of ben's yeah hey um hey ben there's an idea build a cpap attachment to the h h2 genesis <laughs> yeah that's something we can uh, yeah, uh, look I mean, into think about that i mean you know like we've got some of the if you look at some of the the first world problems the most pronounced first world problems obviously one of them is sleep apnea uh and you know and that's amazing that's an amazing testimony loan wow thank you so much for sharing that uh does anyone have I... a question for loan before he has to <laughs> drop off I, we got a couple other folks just unmute yourself if you have a question and okay uh ben did you have any other thing any any other thoughts or questions for alone um not right now but i'm definitely interested in, um i would like to follow up with them apart from here and um yeah so you can get some more details and work something out for them to get them a, a machine that works right yeah there we go <laughs> absolutely hey thank you guys very much it's been fantastic calling you kid all right guy you take care Catch Thanks. you in the catch you in the yeah. By the way, um, you know we have a brown for anyone listening to the video uh, later. We have a Browns Gas Hydrogen uh, Telegram chat group where we basically talk a lot about Browns Gas mostly and molecular hydrogen as well. Uh, most recently, we kind of got into uh, instead of HHO and H two, we're starting to starting to talk a lot about H two O, water structuring water, bubbling water, uh, and then ozone every now and then. So it's kind of really kind of a real interesting chat group about how uh, you can apply some of these technologies and some of these substances to improve your health so that's where we met loan and wow that was really cool so hey i'm going to turn it back to you uh ben about you know let's chat about some of those testimonials we didn't get to hear about in the first webinar yeah um let me, i'm going to go through some of the quicker ones first um some of them my own you know let's you know i talk about from the horse's mouth um and i'll save some of the longer more detailed ones later but um we can jump around but um, to follow up on what I mentioned before, uh, my shoulder, I've got like a, well, I had, I can say now, um, what I consider a frozen, frozen shoulder or impingement or rotator cuff problem could have been torn. I mean, it was pretty bad for a while. I couldn't raise my shoulder or my arm at all above my head. And it was just an almost nonstop pain for, for a certain time length. And um, <clears throat> I delayed treating with brown gas because I was, at the time I was working on a, a PEMF device, you know, coil, post electromagnetic frequency device as well as I wanted to try uh, um, 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 inf infrared light therapy. And so um, I delayed my, my oxyhydrogen, hydrogen treatments on that to, you know, to work these other um, treatments to see if they work. So anyways, um, 
I did find that the infrared and the, the pulse electromagnetics worked. But, um, and so I did that for a month or two and it started getting better. But once I made um, a sleeve, it's kind of like a, a, a cylinder that um, has a drawstring kind of, a, you know, attachment on both sides. So you would slip up over your elbow, your knee, or onto your shoulder, shoulder pull the drawstring on both sides to close it up. You would insert a, a tube or the hose where the Brown's gas is coming out of. That would go into there and it would fill up and it would be hydrogen or the gas it would diffuse through your skin to for a treatment um we've treated so many um hand foot elbow knee shoulder injuries like this and the results have, have been incredible so anyways um <clears throat> my shoulder was gradually getting better but not any you know, stellar improvements and but i did notice also large effects by just um, attaching the the gas hose to a, a silicon like funnel and that would be more, you know, um, direct or very localized, not as much as like say bagging the area would be. Um, so I noticed that, um, okay, on the top, if I put on my top of the shoulder, the front of the shoulder, the back, that area would feel much better, you know, no pains or less knots, but I couldn't easily just move that around and didn't do it justice. But once I got the sleeve I made and was able to treat the whole thing without it, you know, the bag or whatever falling off or, you know, and once it became more easy to use in that way, in that degree, um, I went from being <clears throat> maybe 50% feeling better to near like, I'm like about, and after just three treatments overnight, say one night, wait a few days, do it again, you know, overnight or a few hours. I mean, it, it fall off after a few hours, but I probably got a good, you know, three, four, five hours in um, with the sleeve on my shoulder. So just three treatments. And it's near 98, 99%. I can, I'd have to move my shoulder around to really feel a, si a stiff part now. It's wow. kind of hard to find. Um, but so I waited months, you know, in pain and kind of being a little bit debilitated with my movement and what I can do to in no time being able to use it and don't even think about it anymore. Yeah, I remember. And that was just after three solid treatments. I know. You were talking all last year about PEMF. Uh, to, for your shoulder because you'd tried everything else but mm -hmm. hey what is this like you, can you show what the sleeve looks like because i'm trying to picture in my head what you could use for your shoulder right because your yeah, shoulder I, you can't bag right i mean uh, you know and then it's not right, like you're I, not cupping and you're i don't know if you had a picture of that thing but that would be really interesting yeah i'll, I'll sure. see if i can send you one um and maybe you can put up um okay an odd place so um, if you've got anything else to say I, I, while I'm sending that to you, sure, yeah, I'll I can get to a few other testimonies. Well, I know that I know that Mandy, you've tried topical, right? And I've tried topical, so I'll go first. Um, I uh, last year I had uh, really bad. I was cooking, and I got some hot oil on on my right arm, and it was it was like multiple patches, anywhere from uh, you know a small dot to uh, you know as big as a, a dime. And it was three third degree burns, right? And of course, it hurt like hell. Um, and so my first thought was uh, was to bag it. You know, I mean, I I just washed it off, and and it was just hurting. And I thought, well, you know, I've got my Brown's gas thing, and I wanted to play with it anyway. So I bagged my arm and basically pumped uh, Brown's gas into the bag where my my burns were. And uh, what was what I found amazing was that the pain went away, like within a like I'd say maybe 10, 20 minutes, the pain was gone. And and the most interesting part about uh, using Brown's gas to treat the burn was that the pain never came back. It never hurt again after that. It was just the weirdest thing where, you know, normally it hurts like hell, right, the next day. Because I usually just put a, like a burn gel, you know, get that burn gel at the store. <laughs> But instead, I bagged it. So uh, now what I did notice was I ba I just bagged it the one time because once the pain went away, I just was trying to keep it clean. But uh, it so I, I didn't notice that it like healed faster. But the main thing was the, the pain was gone. And I, I found that to be pretty amazing. Um, and so I, you know, I don't know why I didn't think about why don't I try bagging it for two, three days in a row to see if it healed faster I, before I just got busy. Right. But uh, but that was my one time that I tried bagging. I have tried bagging my legs because uh, I have a bum knee and I, I just I didn't get it. I didn't feel like like an improvement. And it could be where, you know, the, the leg sleeve, right? <laughs> the leg bag goes all the way up to your thigh and I couldn't isolate it, maybe get enough pressure right on my knee. <clears throat> now, what you're describing is giving me the idea of, well, maybe I could make a sleeve just for my knee kind of thing. 
uh, and, yeah, and well, it again. You can um, I'm, I'm hoping to have these sleeves up on our website soon. They're not right now, but if oh, anyone okay. is in a rush to get one, they can email me directly or contact in the, us in the Telegram group, and we can arrange to get one quicker. And um, I know we're sending a, a new machine to you, um, Kay, uh, pretty soon, so um, we can include that as well. So you can yeah, give it a try. I wanted, yeah, I wanted to do an unboxing. So, Mandy, you tried you tried topical, right? Didn't you try to bag something? I did. I bagged my leg. Um, I've got a, also a knee issue. And um, interestingly enough, I got acupuncture several months ago. And one of the spots where one of the needles went is still sore. <laughs> I'm not sure what that's about. Um, and also on Morton's neuroma, all on my right leg and foot. So I thought, I'm just going to bag my whole leg and see what happens. Um, and it did alleviate a lot of the pain. Nothing happened with my knee. I mean, it just it felt better for a while. But um, I only tried it the one time because things got a little busy in life. But I definitely intend to, to do this again um, with a kind of bigger bag because the bag I had was kind of small and it just went right up to my knee. So um, the results were enough that I was like that, that seemed to do something. I, I definitely want to try it again with a bigger bag that goes a little bit farther up my leg mm -hmm. um, to really get my knee in there as well. So cool. Yeah. So, so Ben, does your sleeve like you can just isolate like a, a joint basically like if i just want to treat my knee because with the full right leg back, exactly you know, your, your foot's in there and i mean it's yeah so i it takes a lot <laughs> yeah i just sent you a picture okay you, you should have a picture in telegram if you want to find it and pull it up mm -hmm. um meanwhile i'll go into a, a few other things to mention about what we're since we're on the topic of bagging or, or external use um what I noticed, um, I, I used to have some small little warts on my hands that, I mean, they, I either cut them off, burn them off, and they, they'd come back. I mean, eventually, they would just come back. Um, the last time I did this, what, what, what kind of works to help get them started to come off? I mean, those are you know, small, but they're a pain. They, they, they start to you know, get big after a little while. I see you just pulled up the, um, the sleeve. So let me just jump to this real quick while you got it up. But you can see there's like a, a drawstring type um oh, okay you know string going through with a little lock on it so you'd slide that or, or up to your elbow your knee or the, i use this on my shoulder and so it was enough to close in both sides and maintain it there with enough pressure so that um the hose with the the gas coming out would just be pumped right into it and that seemed to be enough to get the the gas to surround the shoulder and make things better what kind of material is that? Yeah, Does it, it just go right through it, or right? It, um, you cannot if you put it up to your mouth and blow, try to blow through it. You cannot blow through it. It's almost it's very thin and you know, flexible material. Like you can kind of see in the picture, it wrinkles. But they use this material on beds and to prevent you know mites and bugs from getting into the mattress or. Um, it's, it's waterproof as well. So they use it in some cases for our mattress covers, or, you know, to make waterproof mattress covers, oh, okay. use it in hospitals as well. Um, so that's, that's the idea with this material that the gas cannot easily escape. Um, where it's sewed in the seams, um, the gas can escape, but it's not, not a whole lot. It does not blow up. Uh, this, this particular version did not puff up like a balloon, but it was enough to keep the gas in there to make a significant difference. Um, another test I'm doing right now is um, using a, a little bit of silicone to help seal it even better, but it's that's not really necessary. The idea is if you've got enough gas that's um, maintained in the, in the immediate air environment around the joint, it seems that the hydrogen and gases um, diffuse into your skin enough to make a change. Okay. And that, that's the bag that you used on your shoulder? Correct, this exact bag. Okay. What did you pump the uh, the gas in, like at full throttle or half throttle? Um, I recommend uh, maybe somewhere around 80%. I don't like to run our machines at 100%. It just heats up too much, and the, the water evaporates really quickly. Right. And there's, you get a lot of water vapor in it. So, um, you know, I don't recommend breathing any more than 40% power right now with our machines. But around 80% for external use is fine. You just have to watch, you know, the water will still last a while, but it does get... Um, used up a lot more quickly, um, but yeah, a much higher uh, gas output than you would use if you were inhaling. 
or even bubbling. So yeah, I like that. You're 80%. Yeah. <clears throat> so if it, you've got two it, people on the cannulas, though, then you can crank it up to 60 to 80%, right? You, it's right. Right. Yeah. For like a, you know, an hour at most, but um, after an hour, 80%, it starts to heat up. I mean, you can still do it, but I mean, to be really safe, I mean, I, I like to say, you know, no more than an hour at that with, you know, say two or three people connected because um, some people start to notice that the, um, the gas uh, is a little bit warmer or hotter and it may not as be as uh, comfortable to breathe over a longer period of time. Okay. Um, at, in the range of 20 to 30%, I mean, I, I can breathe all night and the gas feels nice and cool still, you know, the, the fan in the machine keeps it really cool. So it doesn't heat overheat to, to affect the, the quality or temperature of the gas coming out. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. You know, that's, so, um, it's interesting that, cause you know, the plastic, you know, like when you use a bag, uh, I, it just gets really humid and, and wet and sweaty and, so this thing, because mm -hmm. because it can breathe, does it doesn't get you don't get wet, right? Oh, yeah, I, really I kind yeah, of I noticed the same thing that's when I used smart. a plastic okay. bag. Yeah, when I sprained my foot and it it swole up and I couldn't walk, I put it on uh, a bag overnight and uh, it did sweat in there. But I also did have the machine on a higher power. But this little sleeve I have here, it can breathe more easily, so it did not sweat or condense any um, gases or vapors into liquid. Okay. Well, I definitely, I definitely want to try this. So you're going to have these uh, available for sale on your website then? Uh, yes, and I'll see if we can okay. get one made if you're interested on um, you said for your knee. So when we yeah, send it out, hopefully this week later. Awesome. So we can give, give us some feedback. So it'd be great to get some feedback on you from you, see how it works for you. Got to get one to Mandy. And, um, <clears throat> right, yeah. yes. Well, she needs a whole leg one, possibly. Oh, you I need mean, a whole leg because... one. A whole leg, right? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, we can do like special orders because my mother sews and she's going to be the one probably making most of these, um, you know, to order. Um, we can make probably like a hand size or foot sizes, you know, one size fits all. But depending on the, the size of your elbow, knee and shoulder, um, if it's a, a young kid or a child, they're going to have a much smaller, you know, d diameter or circumference joint than an older person would have. Right. So we may have to adjust some of the sizes, you know, to, to something like this sleeve right here. Right. You know, but bagging bagging is definitely the way to go for some problems for sure. I've got some more testimonials to that um, effect shortly as well. We can go into what is the best way to treat um, things on your face or head or that area because obviously you can't bag your head. Um, I that's a good question. I haven't had to do that myself yet, or I don't know anyone that's done it. So that's like unexplored territory at this point. The only thing I've tried so far is um, I had a sty on my eye, and I just took the one of the nasal cannulas and I put the little um, the little holes right up, right below my eyelid, and mm -hmm. let it go for <clears throat> I don't know, maybe half an hour or so, mm -hmm. and it really did help it heal faster. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, let me get back to the the warts, and then I got a few other things I want to mention sure. too, so we can okay. get through some of these more testimonies quick. So, um, anyway, what what I found with warts, um, cutting a small piece of garlic and taping it on the wart with some duct tape, um, that works. That'll that'll it's it's sometimes it stings if it really gets in there, but then after a week or so, it'll start to dry out, and the layer will peel off. And um, if you put another piece of garlic on the on the wart to to go deeper and to get the roots out, it really starts to sting. So it's almost difficult to get the whole, um, the get to the roots of it, to get the, the virus out, which causes a, a wart. Um, so in my case, they'd always come back, you know, five, six, seven times, you do it once a year and they still eventually, you know, grow back. But this last time I did it, <clears throat> um, I got the first layer off of the garlic and, you, and the roots turned black. So you can see there's something still in there. And um, I said, oh, I'll, I'll do it again. I'll, I'll just deal with the pain or whatever. And um, before I knew it, um, you know, I was doing a bunch of the Browns gas, you know, breathing more than anything. And they, they're even the roots, it just went away. There's no sign of any of these. I had like six small ones on my fingers and they're all gone now. This is the first time ever that they've completely gone. Wow. And I, I heard from someone else that they had a similar problem with the uh, one that, with warts on their hands and that that's one of the, um, 
things that they had mentioned, the, the warts had gone away. But this is also something that seems to happen over time. It seems like your immune system really has to um, build up or get stronger to fight off the viruses that cause the warts. It's not something that goes away right away. Because uh, I just noticed this in the last couple of months, and I've been using the Browns gas for um, over a year now. And I was wondering if and when they would ever go away. So it did take a while, but they did go away, you know, naturally. And, and how were you? Um, you were cupping it or <clears throat> bagging? You were like bagging. No, I was just I was just breathing. I wasn't even bagging my hands. Oh. And that's probably why it took longer for them to go away, because um, it's not super convenient unless you've got a really painful issue or issue with your one of your joints that you um, want to heal right away. I mean, the warts weren't really a problem. You know, they it wasn't it wasn't worth bagging my hands and being inconvenienced like that all the time. So that's why it takes so long to go away. You can still heal a lot of the, the extremity issues like that just by breathing, but it's just going to take longer, you know, breathing and drinking the water pops as well. Those both. Okay. But, um, because the hydrogen you're breathing or drinking doesn't get to see so your extremities, like your fingers and knuckles and some of your joints, um, not as easily as if you're diffused through your skin, <clears throat> I'm drinking and breathing will take longer to affect those uh, problem areas. Okay. Um, and so, um, so that was that I noticed. Um, but getting back to the the stings and burns, um, I've noticed that as well. My son, my son was um, burned his finger, blister, pain. You know, ten minutes bagging it, pain goes away. It still heals like normal. But once the pain is gone, um. You kind of like don't worry about it. Let it heal on its own. Yeah, you know, yeah. it may heal faster if you continue to to bag it or treat it. But if it's if it's not bothering, there's no pain. Just let it heal as as it would naturally. Um, bee bites, um, stings as well. But uh, another interesting testimony that came up just a few days ago is um, where are they're, they're scorpions. You know, sometimes we get them in houses, and every now and then someone gets bit. Um, one of um, uh, my workers here, he um, he got bit. And he's, uh, it's one of the most painful bites you can get. And it doesn't just last for a few hours like, a, say, a big bee sting would last. For, so for some people, depending on how they react to it, it could last days, you know, the pain. Yeah. Um, and so I, I'm talking to one of um, our clients at, at this Paul, one of our issue Genesis machines. And he's like, um, <clears throat> I get a message from him. And and, well, yeah, so it's a message. I was, wasn't talking about it. He's like, Ben, do you think it will work on um, a scorpion bite? He just got bit by a scorpion. I said, I mean, it, it should. Give it a try. You know, try to bag it up. And um, by the time he got my message and responded, he's like, oh, I breathed, I just breathed it for an hour and all the pain went away. So he didn't even get a chance to bag it. He just sat down and breathed for an hour and all the pain went away. So I'm like, wow, that's pretty good because <laughs> the last person I know they got bit by a scorpion, the pain lasted, you know, days. But if, if he would have bagged it, I could almost guarantee that uh, the pain would have went away much sooner. But I was impressed with it going away uh, within an hour. Wow. Okay. Wow, that's impressive. <clears throat> so stings and pain, that's something that can it definitely alleviates, you okay. know, and, and helps for the better. Um with me, I another meat testimonial is um you know, where I am there's some dusty roads sometimes and I got caught in an old dust storm behind a cloud behind a car and just you know, no no choice but if I was gonna breathe or die, I inhale a bunch of this dust. So the rest of the day I was like, you know, coughing because the dust stuck in the back of my throat. Um, by the end of the day, I was like just this dry, hurting cough, and my throat was sore. I mean, it was like raw. It felt raw. Um, um, what I did, I mean, I, I couldn't sleep because it was that raw in, in coughing. Um, so what I did is instead of putting the cannula in my nose, I put it at the edge of my mouth to, to breathe in the gas. And I noticed that quickly soothed my throat or the soreness aspect of it, and I was able to sleep. And, and then when it would come out of my mouth, it would maybe start hurting again. I'd, I'd wake up. Uh, but um, but that um, almost was allowed me to sleep. It squashed or quenched the pain, the sore rawness pain in my throat enough for me to sleep. And it was it was pretty quick in in the in the reaction time in treating it. Yeah, that if I can jump in, I mean, I just want to you just reminded me that I, I've never mentioned that I, I have asthma. And every now and then, I mean, it's real rare now because I, I don't know why, uh, but it, but <laughs> every now and then I'll start feeling that, you know, the cough that that dry cough kicks in and then your, mm -hmm. your lung, you can feel your lungs getting itchy. Uh, you know, that kind of, that feeling, right. But right. ever since I've got a Brown's gas machine, 
the moment that I get that <laughs> back, you know, that that deep cough, and I, I and I, you know, it just my mind goes, oh crap, you know, I'm getting, a, I'm having an asthma attack or it's starting. I've learned to mm -hmm. just sit on my machine and just inhale for one hour. And when I do that, it's just the, it never develops beyond that point and it disappears. Whereas, mm -hmm. and all of you guys with asthma, you know, right? You know that feeling when your lungs start, it's that, you know, they, that you, you can feel your lungs, something's happening. I call it itchy. Then that cough. And then next thing you know, you're <clears throat> all the time, right? Uh, but yeah, I mean, since I've had a Brown's gas generator and I do that, I have not ever gone past that initial feeling and then the attack kicks in. And I haven't had to use any of my nebulizers or any of that crap uh, since I've gotten a Brown's gas machine. So I, wow, I just, I never thought about saying that, uh, you know, mentioning that. But yeah, lungs. Oh, well, you know, it's, but yeah, it, it's an amazing thing when it comes to your lungs. Yeah, anything to do with any lung problem at all, it seems, because when, you, especially when you're inhaling it, breathing it, that's the first place it goes to. So that's going to get the best of any treatments. Yeah, absolutely. Wow. So what <clears> else are your customers? Uh, experience um, how, how are we on time we're right now uh we're doing really well uh we are just we don't want to make this thing go over an hour right so right right uh, yeah we are let's see at about 33 minutes so yeah okay good good um yeah so on the comps uh, the topic of um bagging and extra treatment we'll just roll with that for right now um another recent one here um one of our clients using the machine and believes in it fully. It, it, it seems to have cured his um, wife of, uh, you know, depression and some mental problems. So that's all, you know, cured up. She's getting off of um, her, you know, some medication she was taking. But um, one of their cousins had a problem with um, diabetes, I think late thirties um, to the point what their, I mean, I don't know too much about diabetes and how it affects the feet, but apparently it, his foot was swollen or in such pain that he could no longer walk. He had to stop working. He had a business um, doing like prefab concrete, you know, forms, and he had to shut that down. Two months in bed, in and out of the doctors, going, going into the third month, um, and his family was trying to convince him that the doctors wanted to operate um, to, to cut his foot up and or um, cut or I think it was maybe had fluids in it as well, but basically do some surgery on his foot to help alleviate the problem. But um, – so this guy was fighting this. He's like, I don't want to do that. I don't want them cutting up my foot. And he's like, I need to find another way. And this is when um, you know, my friend that has a machine, he's like, well, why don't you try this? You know, it's worked for us and for all kinds of issues for us and other people would have let try it. Um, so come over and let's bag it up and let's see what it can do. And so um, <clears throat> he's been in, you know, in bed, in the wheelchair, can't drive, can't do anything, um, and really just incapacitated. So um he finds a ride over to uh, my, my friend's place who has a machine, um, comes in a wheelchair. Someone drives him over, get him out, put him in a wheelchair, wheel, wheels him in. And so for two hours, they bag up his foot, the problem foot, in all the pain, and gives him uh, bubbles some hydrogen water for him to take home, though that, you know, that wouldn't last too long. But um, they gave him some water to drink, drank some, and, and then left some more. And so they, well, the next day he comes back, um, not only not in a wheelchair, but he's w walking, but, but with a limp. He's like, some that's good. there's got to be something to that because today I, I can walk. You know, I'm not in a wheelchair anymore. It's, you know, with the limp, it still hurts, but I'm not, you know, as bad as I was yesterday. So it's like, I want to do it again. So um, it seemed like for a week they did it, round about. So every day he would go over to my friend's house for an hour or two. They'd bag it up and do a treatment, drink a bunch of water, and send them home. Um, so the, you know, recently I asked him, well, how's it? How's everyone doing with the foot and the diabetes? And he said, well, the last time he came over for a treatment, he was riding a bike. He's like, no more pain. His foot is feeling better. And um, he wants to get him. He's like, he's so impressed with the machine that he wants to get one for himself. But not only that, he said his um, family, mother or father would benefit from this. So he wants to buy himself one and his mother or father one because he's seen what it did for him. But he also justified it that he had to shut down his business for near, it was almost three months at the time. Um, so he lost thousands of dollars being and had to lay off his employees uh, while he was in bed trying to recover from this. He's like, if I would have just, you know, spent the money and knew about this and got it from day one, he's like, I wouldn't have been in debt and spending all my money and savings just to trying to survive. I could have healed myself right away and not have to lay off my employees and get right back to work. Yeah. So, I mean, 
for someone to go from on the brink of surgery, can't even walk, in a wheelchair, next day hopping, by the end of the week, you know, feeling fine, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I'll tell you, right behind apnea is diabetes. <clears throat> Boy, I'll tell you, our country is in bad shape when it comes to that. Well, there's no substitute for, uh, see, uh, a good diet either. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, absolutely. You gotta you gotta clean up your diet first. You know, give up all the the sugars and yeah. refined carbs. That that would be the first thing I would do if I was right. Um, diabetic. You can't be sitting there but, eating chicken and you know fried chicken and and complain. Yeah, about yeah, that. exactly. And, and expect to use Brown's gas, you know, the oxyhydrogen gas, yeah. and you know, make it all magically go away. But if you if you're generally healthy and could eat healthy and live a healthy lifestyle, then um, this gas can, the hydrogen can help you get back to normal in super health very quickly. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, that's a great story. Are any, what, what else, <clears throat> else are people? That's just amazing hearing all these stories. So what, what else? Um, are, are, another. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, another story um, with the same friend who's, um, they, um, have a, a grandfather they call it abuelo you know in spanish grandfather is abuelo um he was in the hospital 93 years old right he was in the hospital for two or three months um they said we can't do anything else for him he was um you know vomiting throwing up he couldn't walk very dizzy you know they did as much worse as he can and said we don't just you know send him home he's you know stable though he's he, he can't take care of himself but he, he couldn't stay in the hospital any longer no one wanted that so they send him home, <clears throat> and so um, my friends will let's you know hook him up to our machine and let's see if it helps him any. Um, so he takes the machine over to his house. It was pretty close. Hooks him up. He said when he went over there, he was basically <clears throat> on the couch, um, couldn't really move, really dizzy, not so cohe coherent. And if he needed to go anywhere, he was basically crawling. He couldn't stand up and walk. He had to crawl. It was also you know vomiting. He was someone that was there having to take care of him. You know the neighbor had to come over and keep an eye on him. Um, so my friend didn't have much time, so he's like hooked up the machine, plugged him in, um, let him breathe the the hydrogen. He's like, I'll I'll be back in a few hours, you know, later because I need to run some errands. I'll be back. And so um, I'm not if I get the story, it's either the same day, later that evening, or the next morning. He says he goes back there and he can't find a boiler. He's looking all over. So he <laughs> went to neighbors. She's like, Where, where where's the boiler? What happened to him? Is he okay? He thought he went over to neighbors or to to be taken care of. He's like, no, I think I saw him all back taking care of the chicken coop or remodeling the chicken coop. He's like, what? He's like, just a few hours ago, he was, you know, dizzy, barely coherent, throwing up, crawling around on the floor because he couldn't walk into, you know, almost being normal, it seems like. Um, he's like, oh, so he found him out, you know, back. He say, so he's talking to him. Well, he's like, um, OK, well, glad you're better now. It's like I'm going to you know, take the machine back now that you will. And so Abuelo put up a big fight. He's like, you're not taking my machine. <laughs> I love the way that air makes me feel. He's like, go buy your own. <laughs> so imagine <laughs> this, a 93-year-old man, you know, <laughs> telling his um, the, it's like a grandson-in-law, you know, to go get his own machine. You're not taking my machine. <laughs> yeah. That's, so um, I'm just thinking so this, massive oxygen <laughs> deprivation. You know, I mean, uh, I don't know what it is. What I mean, it, it, it fixed so many of his problems so fast. It was yeah, unbelievable. I mean, um, so Abuelo didn't have the money to buy his own machine, but luckily one of his sons, um, you know, has done well. So the family convinced one of his sons to buy him a machine so he can have, you know, permanently. So he's been using it every day since. Um, I know once they borrowed it to treat someone else in the family. So they took Abuelo's machine away for a week and the Disney's came back. You know, he couldn't, he was, you know, dizzy and just didn't feel right. He's like, bring that thing back. You know, it's like, I need it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, you know, that makes complete sense. I'm just thinking because, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just thinking if you if we took a look at a person's blood after they hook up to a Browns gas, I'm guessing that they're going to have the same reaction that they would if they were to be exposed to like a PMF treatment or some of these other treatments where you take the blood, typically it's in, you know, your typical health of a person is the blood is a little bit clustered or even worse, right? You got this whole row of mm -hmm. formation coins, you know, the blood, the red blood cells stack up in coins and it really deprivates the ability for oxygen transfer within the bloodstream. So I'm guessing, and, and this would be great to find out is, 
is that Brown's gas, one of its, uh, uh, you know, attributes is that it freaking probably just opens up the blood and releases all of those clusters and just really improves the level of right. that's, uh, oxygen. That's one of the, that's one of the exact things that happens. Um, I found yeah. research and, and videos up, that right? um, yeah. with the um, with the, the image you have up on the screen here, the um, the you know, it's, it's a number of ways to call this, but the uh, expanded um, the electric electrically expanded water. Yeah. It's basically what I understand is um, the water molecule charged with two extra electrons, which almost instead of having that um, angle shape to the water molecule, it's almost you know those two extra electrons plugged into it, uh, it stretches out that bend into almost a linear fashion. And it's not super stable with those extra electrons. It seems like right before the hydrogen and, and oxygen break up, you pump electrons into it. You know, say one more electron or a little bit more energy, and then it breaks the hydrogen and oxygen bond. So there's a prephase to that, which charges the water molecule. And that is um, theoretically, or they, or they say, is um, in a gaseous phase. So, you know, consider a negative ion, you know, a negative ion is anything molecule or atom that's charged with electrons, it's got a negative right. charge to it. So because that's semi-stable, um, once that enters your body, it gives up those electrons. And if you've got two um, of anything that's charged, you know, positively or negatively, they're gonna repel each other. You know, like charges repel and opposite charges attract. So if um, these extra electrons, they get into your lungs, which get into your blood uh, in circulation really fast, it charges up your blood negatively with negative ions, which is naturally what the body is used to with the earth is negatively charged. Well, the whole idea of where lightning comes from, you know, the earth is negatively charged, you know, positive in the atmosphere creates the lightning to, to neutralize those, um, the potential difference between those voltages. So naturally, if you're walking around on the Earth, you're absorbing negative ions or electrons through the soil. Now, we don't have that uh, option these days so much. We're all walking around and in, inside on floors, isolated uh, from the negative charges with insulated shoes for the most part, right? Right. So this is a, a, a new natural way to get those electrons that our body needs. So anyway, go back to the circulation in your blood. When this charges your blood, uh, with the negative ions, uh, the electrons, it separates them. It forces them to not clump up, but to repel off of each other. So in that aspect, you desert, they can more easily throw through your blood vessels in the smaller capillaries and not stick or clump together. Um, a while back, um, you may remember in our Telegram group, we shared a video of um, a Japanese, um, what was that? Not a webinar, a but a, thing, right? Yeah, exactly. So that they put a microscope, a little drop of oil on your fingernail um, under a microscope where you can see the capillaries in right where your uh, fingernail meets your skin, where it grows from. Um, <clears throat> there's access to, you can see the capillaries right there. And looking in the microscope, they do a pass over it and you see all these like U-shaped um, capillaries that, you know, run blood up into your uh, fingernail and back and that's how the the cells that create your fingernails get nutrients you know it needs to get blood and nutrients in there and you can see how I mean it's kind of hard to tell at first but there's you can see this U shape which is the capillary and there's a few spots in there which was the blood I mean I didn't know that at the time when you first start looking at it but then they hook up the um, client or the person to a cannula to start breathing the hydrogen and remember this, within 30 seconds to a minute, you can see that those capillaries come alive in what was clotted blood or blood that was not moving freely. It just starts, you know, moving and moving. And those little bitty clots that were there, they dissolve. And you can see the little cells of um, blood passing through the capillaries. And it was amazing to see how fast the effect was and how quickly it, um, the body reacted once it started uh, breathing the, the hydrogen or the gas. Yeah, I remember that. Um, I'll see if I can find that and put it in the video description for anybody that wants to take a look at it. But that was, yeah, that was pretty amazing. It, it just, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was really amazing. I, I, the fact that the blood, I mean, well, it just, it wasn't just the existing capillaries. It actually expanded beyond where even the other, you know, it started creating, not creating new capillaries, but you could see the other ones waking up and getting 
you know, flushing. Right, out. I right. guess flushing is a better word for it. Everything started flushing out. Right, it just increases circulation. So if it acted that quickly on those small capillaries in your fingernails, which you can really see and you can relate to, just seeing it and seeing and watching it move, you know, being stuck before and moving afterwards. I mean, just think of what it's doing in the rest of your body and how it's healing things. It one of the underlying principles that's going on, which is helping heal the body, is increasing circulation and access to nutrients in those capillaries that may be clogged up or your blood cells may be clumping up and not being able to so quickly pass to the capillaries and bring nutrients and oxygen to where it's needed. Just that alone would be enough to justify some of the healing that we're experiencing. Yeah. No, you're right. Absolutely. Well, that's kind of interesting that you mentioned that. I'd never thought about the fact that I know that I know that you know, I'm inhaling additional electrons. It's basically, you know, when you bubble the water, you're literally drinking electrons, you're inhaling electrons. I never thought of it as an as a substitute for grounding, although I, you know, I, but you're right, though. It's kind of funny. I just realized when you said that, <laughs> that mm -hmm. um, I don't have the same situations that I used to have when I didn't ground enough, you know, um, mm -hmm. I, because I'm always breathing. So, yeah, you're right. It does really pump you up. Huh, interesting. Because I used to, in the old yeah. days, before I had a generator, I'd always try to make a, a you know, remind myself to go outside and ground, but you never quite have enough time, right? So I, I would always exactly. Go, oh man, I haven't ground for a couple of days and I'm feeling really off, but I don't ever mm -hmm. feel off anymore, ever, you know. <laughs> uh, I still ground as much as I can, but yeah, you're right. That's interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I come from uh, the viewpoint of a, you know, a physicist and an electrical electrical engineer, right? And that I did that in school, in like official schooling, as they would say, right? But once I got out of school, all my um, personal research and learning has been in health and in the biomedical field. So right. it's bridging the gap between physics, electrical engineering, and how the voltage and charges work, right. as well as what I understand now with um, reading so many uh, research papers on health. Yeah. So yeah, I'm so, able to make some of these connections. Oh, yeah. Since, you know, since I got into what I do, um, I've, <laughs> I've read a lot, learned a lot, studied a lot. And, you know, it's just it's just comes down to electrons. I mean, mm -hmm. whether you're taking vitamin C or breathing in Brown's gas or doing C60, it's electrons. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. all about ion transports <laughs> and and uh, and the electrical charge of, of different uh, chemicals in our bodies and how. It, it all comes down to that. It really comes down to this whole bioelectro, electro, uh, you know, activity and the way that our bodies work. I mean, we really are electrical beings. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, and once you understand that, you know, as opposed to take a chemical, you know, everything's uh, everything, every problem is going to be solved by some chemical. But, you know, that's not true because we're, we're more than just a chemical being. We're also an electrical being. And once you understand, right. that, like, you know, yeah, I mean, yeah, what's, the best books on the subject. It's also, or, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say one of the best books on the subject is healing. Uh, you know, healing is voltage, right? When Jerry Tennant. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, definitely. Understanding yeah, that, that makes sense. understands you understand health, true health. Would you agree, Mandy? Right. Are you guys, uh, are you awfully quiet? If you have any questions, you know, jump in. She's muted right now, but here she comes. <laughs> Thank right. you, Jerry. Yeah, Mandy owns uh, the full tenant thing. So she's really on board with, on, on the tenant. Uh, okay, so yeah. I'll say like, real quick to, on the subject you just mentioned, but what's what I find incredibly amazing, um, talk about how the body's electric and how at such a fundamental core level on how the body generates its energy inside the mitochondria, which is a whole crazy story in and of itself, what that is and where it comes from, um, how using hydrogen, the, the mitochondria basically cleave off uh, a hydrogen atom, atom from sugars, carbohydrates, proteins that has just the right bond to keep it stable, but not strong enough where the mitochondria can't pull it off. But basically, it pulls off a hydrogen um, atom from what we consider or call food. It, then it rips, off the, it rips apart the proton and the electron and puts that through a, the Krebs cycle, which is you know three plus steps of a process. And in the end of the process, out pops an ATP molecule which the body is uses for energy. It's like gasoline for the body, basically. Yep. And at the end, at the complete end of the cycle, it produces water. So your body, you're breathing oxygen from the air, it's in the atmosphere, but there's no hydrogen. So you need the hydrogen that comes from the food normally. Right. And so, you know, 
it's incredibly interesting to me that at its most core level, the the mitochondria and our energy come from the hydrogen atom. It rips it rips it apart, puts it back together, and ends up with water. Basically, the what rocket engines run off of, you know, hydrogen yeah. and oxygen. Absolutely, yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you know, like I try to when I try to explain to people about health, you know, talking about the bioelectrical aspect of it, but there's the other aspect of it that we're we are as adult human <laughs> beings roughly like an eleven and a half gallon saltwater aquarium wrapped in, mm -hmm. uh, and so we are literally water. And when you think of water, H two O, and that that means that the most prevalent molecule in our bodies is hydrogen and oxygen mm -hmm. right and uh and, and of course there's a whole bunch of carbon in there so uh yeah i mean th this just absolutely makes sense hey you know we're rounding up on an hour and i wanted to kind of talk about your product because i know that you're working on an enhancement to pmf so i kind of wanted to get a just kind of like get a feel for that real quick uh, before we end so what i want to do though is let everybody know watching this uh, webinar uh, at a later date. Uh, I do want to just just mention one little thing real quick as an additional testimonial is uh, this mm -hmm. week for the first time I tried treating my eyes uh, by putting uh, Brown's gas inside a set of goggles. Um, and um, I'm just trying to see if it'll imp you know help my vision, right? Because when I first started doing Brown's gas, my vision improved. And I'd say like it got, let's say it went 100 better uh, but now it's back to like 50 better. So it did go, you know, throttle back down in terms of improvement. So I'm trying to get back to that, you know, so I'm trying to see if it, it'll do anything. But my first attempt was it really dried out my eyes. So I'm just wondering if anybody out there has a suggestion, like how can you treat your eyes directly uh, with Brown's gas and then, you know, of course, not dry them out because they were they got pretty dried out. So I'm thinking I got to kind of, I, have you, has any of your customers tried treating their eyes um no but um that's something i want to do for myself as well i mean i'm, okay. I'm just now starting to need reading glasses and um yeah we, we mentioned like honey before some people use that for cataracts and yeah yeah and, and i've done a little bit of that but i think hydrogen in this in the, in the gas browns gas could help and like you said the the trick would be to help uh, humidify that or maybe put some drops in the eyes to keep them overly um, lubricated. Yeah. Well, that was so the they don't dry out. Because I'm like, I run the <laughs> gas through two bubblers and I'm thinking, is there, because I know there's a way to dry the gas, right? There's there's dryers where you mm -hmm. can dry the gas, take the humidity out of the gas. But is there anything that you could actually use to put humidity into the gas? Well, can normally you, those maybe, bubblers we put have on the side, they they're called humidifier that. bottles to put you know, good water vapor back into it. So the gas is not overly okay. dried, but I'm thinking for the eyes, I would look at putting some uh, lubricating drops in the eyes. Um, okay. Also, I mean, all, the honey at the same time also helps lubricate the eyes. It stings at first when you first put it in, but that in combination with the Brown's gas may be um, a good combination. You can put honey in your eyes. Oh, go ahead. Um, yeah. What if you made <laughs> a saline solution with the Brown's gas bubbled water and use that for eye drops. Um, yeah, that, that could definitely work. Um, whatever solution you're going to be putting in your eyes, whatever drops that is, you bubble it through the, uh, the hydrogen first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to tinker around with that and I'll let you know how it works out. Um, so the other thing is let's talk about, <clears throat> before we go, I do want to talk about, you're working on now. Here's your product. This is your website, and for all you folks, uh, Ben's website is H2 Biohacker, um, and his product is the H2 Genesis. So uh, let me just see if I pop over to the H2 Genesis. Where, where is that guy? Somewhere here. This guy. That's the uh, and this is your shop you're looking at. Right. So I'm looking. That's at, the unit right there. Trying to pop up the page. So now you. This is your your current model, right? Um, I do. Oh, I right. do want to mention that the, right now the the price is uh, fourteen ninety five. If anyone's interested, I do want to mention that uh, there is uh, Ben's Ben and I are putting uh, there's a hundred dollars off discount code in the video description that'll be good for thirty days after the video's uh, published. So if anyone's interested, you know you can get like right here. It's already a thousand off right now on sale. Plus with the discount code, uh, if you're interested in getting a Browns gas from Ben. A generator uh, it's an additional hundred dollars off and use the discount code uh in the video description uh for uh 
for this webinar. So that's that. But yeah. what I wanted to chat about yeah. was uh, this is your current model, but are you're right now? Aren't you adding like PMF, uh, like uh, like something else to it, or, or or is that still in the works? Um, that that's something I, you know, ex I'm experimenting with, and we definitely added to a test unit here. Um, but in my latest experiments, like using the PMF on my shoulder and comparing the effectiveness of effectiveness of that um, to just a plain Brown's gas in the sleeve I showed you earlier, um, I'm in no rush to do any oh, okay. PMF. You know, I'm I'm thinking that it's, it's almost not necessarily a waste of time, but it's definitely not um, worth uh, pursuing that. Uh, to uh, to the degree or as fast as I was before. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Based on my last experiments, so right. that's kind of on hold right now. That's okay. that's something we may do in the future. But <clears throat> every, everything we throw this rounds gas at this oxyhydrogen at hydrogen, at, however you want to call it, um, it's fixing. So I almost see very little need for almost any other supplements or any other devices out there now. I mean, that's my personal opinion. No, no, and, no. yeah, I. Well, yeah, so that's kind of like I was thinking, because I know you were looking at a PMF to treat your shoulder, but if you figured out that, <clears> yeah, it's kind of like you don't get the value add, so why bother? Yeah, exactly, and, that, and that's why, I, like I said, I purposely delayed treating myself with the, the, the hydrogen to see how the PMF would work. And um, the coil I made was fairly strong, and I tried all different frequencies, and I did notice um, it did help. Um, it would loosen it up, and the pain yeah. would go away, but it w did not heal and I didn't get the results nearly as fast as I did once I started using the sleeve where my shoulder was completely encased in the hydrogen for hours at a time, you know, while I was sleeping. Okay. And so, you know, the, the PMF, adding that to the, the our unit at the moment is kind of you know, on hold for now. Okay. It's not worth the, the benefit. It's not worth the, the work at this point. Okay. Uh, so for those of you who aren't familiar with uh, Ben's website, uh, there's a page of just the testimonials. So uh, there's some uh, like just voice clips. There's uh, other types of tests. You can listen to other different customers actually call in and, and you know, talk to him. And then you can see all the other different testimonials out there. So if anybody's interested yeah, in Brown's Gas, a lot more like, to what add. can it do? Uh, it goes beyond this webinar and it kind of gets into like you can go to his testimonial page. Uh, and you can also go and check out the studies. He's got a full page of just studies. Uh, I, that's why I love your I love your site. You you really pack it in there um, in terms mm -hmm. of just all the different uh, ailments and the different studies where molecular hydrogen can help that. So uh, I do want to point that out. So if anybody's interested in learning more about that, and you know, in terms of like ideas, because I'm a, I'm a tinker and I'm always trying to figure out different ways of doing things, thus the whole goggle test this week. But I did want to point out something, and maybe it's something you could think about doing. Um, just for this, I was doing some research just to see, like, what's the current, like, the absolute most recent studies that are coming out about molecular hydrogen. And, you know, one of the things that I thought was interesting, uh, Ben, was there's, there's this one study that actually said that inhaling uh, H2 hydrogen could facilitate lipid metabolism during aerobic exercise. And what this, and by the way, there'll be uh, this little page here. I'm not going to get into it, but uh, if you want to read any of these studies, I'll put the links in the video description. But I want to point out this one study and what this means to me, right, is you know how they've got these oxygen um, things at, at gyms now where you can kind of hook up, like the Vasper hooks you up to all that cold water, but then they've got the oxygen mask and you could be like, you know, doing your spinning class with the oxygen thing. But here's a study that says, and it proved that if you're breathing in hydrogen, right, while you're exercising, it burns your fat better than if you didn't, mm -hmm. you're just breathing air. And I thought that was really, so what about like, so I'm thinking like a tinker, right? I'm like, oh, you know, we should get Ben to create like a mask <laughs> where you could yeah. be like exercising and you could be hooked up to your Brown's gas thing. Mm. Is that something that you like? You know, anyway, I'm just throwing some ideas at you because you know, it's, it's it's a good good idea. I like the way you're thinking, but I don't the, the practicality of it may not necessarily be there. But <clears throat> along the same lines as this study you just mentioned, um, I noticed others noticed, and I found other research that shows that just breathing the the gas or using these hydrogen therapies alone is enough to reduce your body fat content and build muscle. So you can do nothing other than you know, breathe the gas and just sit around doing your same old lifestyle, you can gain muscle and lose fat. Yeah. But the, the effects are in hand. I noticed that with myself and others uh, mentioned that as well. It's like, man, I'm losing weight and I, I feel like I'm gaining muscle. You know, I'm not doing anything different.
<clears throat> but um, that's like the American the, the, dream right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not like <clears throat> I mean, it it won't make you you know Arnold Schwarzenegger sitting sitting at your desk, right? But um, for athletes, it does take it to another level. Yeah. Um, so you will definitely notice enhanced you know fat burning and muscle gain when you're um you know doing a, a hydrogen therapy type yeah. of protocol so, i mean what this is saying here is it, it's the same the same thing i said in a different way you know inhaling hydrogen could facilitate lipid metabolism during aerobic exercise well you don't necessarily have to be do do it during exercise there's a residual effect as well so oh, okay i think it's um like i said the practicality of it is not there but you get say 70 80 percent of the effect by breathing before or drinking the water before and or after. Right. So, yeah, absolutely. That's a, that's <laughs> actually been proven. Any, everybody is that, uh, Brown's gas, hydrogen, molecular hydrogen, uh, really increases your, uh, recovery rate, uh, improves your recovery mm -hmm. rate after strenuous exercise, you know? Um, yep. yeah, definitely. So I was thinking that you just get like, you know, cause the cannulas come in like four feet, seven feet lengths. You just get a mm -hmm. long one and then you're sitting there spinning and you could be breathing at the same time because you know uh, okay but so you I, could if um yeah. you have if you have a, a spinning bicycle in your house you know, or yeah. a treadmill you can do that yeah yeah and it's pretty easy to cut when you the cannulas get old you know we cut off the part that loops around your ears and you can cascade all these cannulas together to make a really i've connected as many as five together so i can sit at the other end of the house um and watch a movie with my kid you know so <laughs> that works yeah all right so then one other thing i want to point out is there's this one uh paper that I'm a recent paper I think it came out in November 2020 or something like that uh, development of molecular hydrogen medicine and I really want to point out anyone that's interested uh, in what hydrogen could do for you in brown's gas uh, basically this 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 read this paper the link in the video description and it's got the reason one of the things it's got this really cool little graphic that kind of just sums up a lot of what we've actually been talking about in terms of testimonials is like what happens when you administer uh hydrogen and and you know and in the form of brown's gas is hydrogen and oxygen plus electrically expanded water but you've got all of these incredible benefits that come from this because brown's gas is molecular hydrogen therapy plus electrically expanded water uh you know therapy i guess is a better phrase but negative yeah, negative ions yeah. yeah the whole aspect is that you've got a double benefit uh it's not just right, buying exactly. a hydrogen machine but you're getting a brown's gas which is a hydrogen machine plus and so the paper really does talk about uh, the positive effects uh, on aging, on fatigue, radiation damage, vascular, blah, 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 blah. So you can just see this, this uh, diagram just really demonstrates that the multiple different facets of, of benefits that you get from the gas. It's pretty amazing. So uh, these are all third-party peer-reviewed papers, uh, video description, uh, and feel free to, to learn more. So yeah, any parting, any parting thoughts? <clears throat> Um, yeah, a couple more quick things to add. Um, sure. the, the price that's currently on our website, that may be going up a hundred bucks in the next month. So this may be oh. the last month that it's at this price just because, um, word of mouth is, you know, increasing a lot and we're like barely keeping up with the, just the word of mouth orders that are coming in. So, um, to expand our facility and get more help, you know, we may have to, to gradually raise the price a little bit. I don't want to keep, go up too much, but oh, it may okay. go up at a hundred bucks, you know? Oh, okay. Um, maybe maybe two over the next year, but we'll see. All right. So, um, so <clears throat> and then also we've got some people that um, are talking about doing some you know large orders. So if those come in, who you know first come first serve. So okay. that's just you know, something to keep in mind. So okay. So right um, now though, let's say for the next thirty days while we've got this discount <clears throat> code, uh, it's fourteen ninety five right. and and a hundred bucks off using the discount code. But then after that, probably right. it's going to go up. All right. Okay. Right, right. We can keep it at that yeah. for this month, at least, while we're you know talking about mentioning okay. here. All right. Thanks for the help. Um, and then let's see. There was one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, and it escapes me at the moment. Um, oh, yeah. This is it. Um, real quick, another real quick testimonial. Someone just recently um came by to pick up a machine they just bought, and um, as they're leaving, they said, "Oh." By the way, I talked to so and so, another client of yours that bought a machine, and this is kind of what you know clinched it for them to to get a machine. They like they asked him, like, well, what do you think of Ben's machine that I choose Genesis? How do you like it? And and she was like, I put it this way, if someone broke into my house and stole it, I'd buy another one right away. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like that. That pretty much says it. 
<laughs> before everything else, before yeah, the TV, yeah, like... <laughs> before the new laptop, I got to have my beach. Yeah, I got to admit, though, it's the first thing I do every day. I sit at my desk, I bubble my bottle of water, I hook up on a canal. Yeah, it's it's uh, oh. it's what the one more quick thing to answer. I, I found yeah. I found a way that this is going to I'm, I'm going to reserve this for um uh, the, the clients that buy the machine just to, as one more one last incentive. But well, two things, two quick things. We're going to soon start a, a forum for, you know, clients only that uh, be giving special extra treatment and probably um, gifts to an extra. They'll be the first to to get some of our new experiments and research right there that, that we're um, getting into. So, for example, the sleeve and some other things that we're working on. Cool. Um, but um, I, I found a way. And I've tested it also on several people to increase the effectiveness of the um, the hydrogen water. I mean, nearly almost tenfold. Wow! I mean, it's incredible. Um, so I'm going to reserve that oh, for okay. clients that buy the machine. I think you, I kind of alluded it to you, Kay. So you know. may know, but okay. let's um, keep that a little secret for now until we re re release it. Just so I want to give that, and we'll be giving um, away. That'll be coming with some of the machines in the future. It's that that extra tweak to increase the effectiveness but um you, i've yeah. given some people some of this water and they're like blown away by uh, so you found a way much more get, they feel it to get the water to hold more gas is that what you've done <clears throat> right wow right, okay. right exactly yeah so, that's, um, that, that's been like the holy grail in the chat room as people trying to figure that out <laughs> oh cool yeah. well oh, there's, a, there's actually there's actually two things that we're we're doing um that, that can be done either one of them will work but there's one in particular that has been like you know off the charts, and I've been getting great feedback. So um, we we'll reserve that for the people for our direct clients, and we may wow. share that eventually with everyone. But it's awesome. a little <laughs> teaser there. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Well, we'll leave everybody with that thought. Hey, okay. So uh, now, if people want to get a hold of you, uh, it's uh, through your website, right? Uh, H2 Biohacker. Right. There's going to be a link in the description below. Uh, and if you want to get a hold of me, I'm at the Tinkers Academy. That's my blog. Uh, and also, just as I mentioned earlier, we have an HHO and H2 experience Telegram chat group, and that's where you can jump in and get a hold of any of us, ask questions, interact with other people using Browns Gas and Hydrogen and so forth. So uh, all the links are in the video description, and everyone is welcome. Uh, any parting words? Anybody? Nope. I think that's it for me. It was a great call. We got a lot of good information yeah. out this time. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, and thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate you spending some time with us. I hope you got something out of it. And if you want to learn more, check out the video description. And you know, just say uh, thank you, Ben. Thank you, Mandy. Thanks, Pete. Thanks, Lone. Uh, really appreciate your time today, and and just really enjoyed this conversation. So uh, thank you very much, and have a great day.